Can everybody hear me? And I'm the county appraiser. Um, and what we put together, we can notice uh, increase quite a bit. What I'd like to do tonight is try to explain some of the questions you might have on what happened. Uh, we don't all have to agree with it. I'm not going to say I agree with it all either. We don't have all the, all the answers to the questions yet. Um, I can't tell you exactly where, where, where this meeting is going to take us if we're going to have two or three more meetings. But we needed to start somewhere. Because as you know, on your valuation notice, it went up more than probably you've even seen. Probably more than when reappraisal came in in 1989. Uh, everybody, everybody, everybody remembers that year. Um, so what I was going to kind of do is, is kind of explain what we're going to do and then we're going to move forward. Uh, first of all, to kind of let you know how we got here, is when we talk about the valuation notices, before that, I went in and talked to the commissioners and told them that we were going to have some concerns uh, with the south part of the area of the county. And that's where most of the problems came from, or the questions. So what we did is the commissioners agreed that we, that we need to answer these questions, and they're all, they're, they're back this 100%, uh, stands behind it. And um, so I think as a group, we thought we could get a lot more further than if you try to appeal, and then I'm going to have to give you no change, and then you're going to go to the Board of Tax Appeal all by yourself, and you're going to get a no change. And then you're going to be done, and you're going to be sitting out there all by yourself. There's some people in here that's been through that. It's pretty aggravating. Uh, so we figured this would be a better way to try to address this pretty large problem. Uh, so bear with us. Uh, we don't have the answers tonight. I'm just going to let you know that right now. But I hope when you leave, you're going to you're going to know exactly what happened to your property, and you're going to know exactly where we're going to try to go with this. Uh, this will probably take up until we certify values, uh, maybe till the, the middle of June. So uh, well, I'll show you something on the computer here in a little bit where everybody's parcel right now shows that you appealed it, okay? As many, we got everybody's parcels in that, that, that can't call us and we put them in. Remember, does anybody sign? Okay, we got everybody, okay. All right, so kind of what I have on the chair is kind of, kind of the, the way we're gonna go through this, hopefully. There will be time for questions um, and Don can bring the mic to you or right now with this size group, hopefully everybody can hear each other if you don't want the mic. Uh, it is video, so we can use it later if we need to, but don't worry about that. Everybody speak and tell us how you feel. If I can't answer a question, Nina's going to write it down, or we're going to look on the video, and we will get the answer for you before we have another meeting, before the next meeting. Okay? I know everybody here is probably on the verge of getting really upset. Because what it's going to do to you is when the taxes come out, but just give us give us a little time here, and we'll see what we can do. Okay. Uh, first of all, to explain to you how the values are arrived at, it is by law uh, that that the Division of Property Valuation Department sets the values for every county, for every soil type in the state of Kansas. And we're going to clear this right now. The market values have nothing to do with these values we're talking about. Market values are not in the equation at all. Uh, not in Kansas. Okay? It's done by net income, expenses, a lot of variables, crop practicing, crop yields, pricing, all that kind of stuff. But we'll get into that then. One thing then what they do is on your first... And when I say they, and I'll try not to say they, what, I'm, what I'll say is it's either going to be um, Kansas State Ag and Statistics, which they, they gather the data. They, once that uh, data is gathered, whether you, we like it or not, that data then is given to Property Evaluation Department, and then the director sets those, that information to value. And how that's done is with the cap rate. Okay. That cap rate does vary from county to county. That might be part of our problem 
Uh, Stan and I haven't talked about the cap rate that much, but we'll get into that here after a while. So of the 105 counties on your sheet, the first step they do, uh, Kansas, Kansas has Statistics and Property Valuation Department, and put, this puts us into nine different districts. So you can actually see what district we are in right now. Some of our problems, when we get later in, the, in, the, in, in here with the spreadsheets and so forth, we have problems with the counties in our district on what our values are compared to what their values are. So we agree with you that we have a problem. Um, but as of right now, since I do not do your valuations, I cannot change your values. And that's why we need quantity of people to try to get something done. Okay? So, it's all stands for. <laughs> okay? So, so there's the distance there. Okay, the second thing I came up with this, that way I, you don't have a spreadsheet. Hey, Carl? Yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> first one, first one, first one, first one. Sorry. Okay, so the first thing Kansas Ag and Statistics do, and this is why other people are not here, they've seen a general increase in the county probably right at between 12 and 14 percent again from last year to this year. What's, what, what is happening is, remember we use a, the state uses an eight year period, okay? So we do this every year, so every year there's going to be a, a, a year going out of the study and a new year coming into the study. And I hope you can see this, but the two orange ones underlined to do the 2016 value, the state used data from 2007 to 2014, okay? And we know most of your income probably started going down with prices and so forth in the middle of July. I mean the middle of 2015. And you might still be seeing the decline in the income, okay? So what, the reason the values did increase <coughs> Is remember, we talked about landlord net income, expenses, yields, uh, commodity prices, and so forth. If you remember in your own practice, was 2006 a better or worse year for landlord net income and yields and so forth than 2014? And most of you will probably say 2006 was probably the worst, the worst of the two years. That's what I've got for most everybody. Um, so when the 2014 year went into the study, it was a better year, better income, better pricing than 2006 that stimulated that increase. Okay? So will you see this again next year? You can answer in your own mind. What's the difference between 2015 and 2007. If you already know in your mind that 2015 was still a better year as far as commodities and so forth like that, yields, then this year you, we may see another increase one more year. But one thing that, that, that we kind of disagree with is the eight years is an awful long time to do a study to where you fill in your pocketbooks probably two years to two and a half years of a decline in income, but yet your taxes are going to steadily go up on the valuations until that levels out and then hopefully it'll start coming back down when the, when the, when the, the worst years come into the state. Does that make sense? That's kind of how it's done right now. Well, not kind of, that is how it's done. Okay? Okay, the next thing I have is this here sheet right here. This is on this is on all the soil types in our county. And what we have, we give this to every taxpayer if they want it. What it does is the first two columns, well the first column is red, that's the soil type. The next two columns is the dry crop, the next two is the native grass, tame grass, and then irrigation, all the way across. And it's going to let you compare to 2016 values to 2015 values on what your soil type is. So we're going to go back to this here after a while, but everybody kind of keep this. This is the this is kind of the 
granddaddy of them all. This is where it shows all your prices right here. Okay? Okay, then the next thing, so there's a couple things that, that changed your values for the people that are sitting in here instead of the normal 12 to 14 percent to up to 200 percent of an increase. It's actually basically in the south, in the, in the southern part of the county, and it has to do with a lot of the a lot of the soil types that are coming up from Pratt County into Reno County, and so forth. we're all kind of in that same ball right there with those soil types. It's, that's why you guys are all here. This is actually the new soil survey that was put out by Natural Resource Conservation Service and we downloaded this soil survey into our system. And then what we did is we put the soil survey over the top of everybody's parcel in the counties. Okay? So we could see Okay, one thing I'm going to go back on is this right here. Yes, sir. Right now, we have everybody here that's called in. This is a file with all, all the appeals, okay? So this is what I just wanted to show everybody. I'm just going to pull this one parcel up. I'm going to go to this appeal tab. This is how we have you in record right now. And actually, uh, Property Valuation Department, I told them what we did, and they can actually go in now and they can count how many parcels we have under appeal. Because everybody we did, we put into today's date at 7.30 p.m. That's your appeal date and your appeal time. Even though you called in three weeks ago, four weeks ago, you appealed for tonight. So that way they can track how many parcels we have that, that, that are, we have unhappy. So this is how you're not going to be forgotten right here, this red column right there. Okay? Just, to, just so you have a peace of mind there. Okay, this is kind of the, the south part of the area. This is that soil survey that is going to... What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this into a parcel. Okay, so the parcel in blue would be 160 acres that, that, and we can pull your parcel up also. The purple lines would be the soils that came from the new soil surveys on here. Okay, so what happened then, we downloaded these and then we data entered every single ag parcel to the correct soil types, to the new correct soil types per acre. As you can see, it's not all dry crop, right? Up in the corner, there's, a, there's trees, so that's not going to be, of course, that's not going to be dry crop. That's going to be what we do in this county is we call that waste ground. Okay, Some counties call it pasture. We call it waste because you can't use it for nothing, So, which is $10 an acre. So you can go by every parcel on here, and we get in every one of them. Now, on your soil, when we did this, we had five soils that we no longer have in Stafford County anymore. They're obsolete, they're not used anymore. We have 16 new soils. And that's where we're going to get into some of the discrepancies or some of where, you, where, where you, you've seen this 200% increase. Okay? Is everybody following me? Are we, am I doing okay here? Um, because it's going to, you're probably going to need your neighbor when we flip flop from, from, one, from one spreadsheet to the other. But it's going to make, I think, a lot of sense here in a little bit. Once again, you don't have to agree, though, but I feel like what we try to do is at least let you know what happened to your valuation numbers. Okay? And then we'll go from there. So we have 16 new soil types, 5 that's no longer used. And, and we did, we done that over some. Now we did one other throw, we did one other thing for the irrigators. The irrigators, um, what that's done, what's, what that's done is it's taken one step further and you, you're done by a water ratio. How much water do you actually use? So the last time we did it, we did that was we used the three years in 2010, 11, and 12. 
to figure out through the water resource division how much water you use so we can adjust irrigated land. Okay? Those years you used a lot more water in 2010, 11, and 12 than you did in 2012, 13, and 14. So we redid it over the summer to get the, the correct <coughs> water usage, which actually lowered some of your land if you use less water. Does that make sense? It wouldn't have been, the reason we did that is it, you wouldn't, it wouldn't have been fair to you as a taxpayer to download the new soils and not update your water ratio. You would have had brand new values of brand new soils on old water ratio, <coughs> which would have kept your value higher. So they could have looked worse, I guess. But anyway, just to let you, that, that was all done this summer, okay? Will we do that every summer? Absolutely not. We won't do this. We won't get a new uh, NRCS map. We don't even know when they're going to do it again or update our soils again. We will do the water ratio probably every two to three years depending on what, what happens with the rainfall. <coughs> if this year or next year it doesn't rain, we won't wait. We'll do it again. Or vice versa. So, do you get some all again? What, sir? Did they do this in all the counties? Okay, the question was, did they, did they do this in all the counties? Um, I don't know if they did it in all the counties. Um, every county will eventually have it done. Now, this is the kicker, okay? Some counties may have this ready to go, okay? But some counties may not do it for whether they don't have enough manpower or whether they don't have time to do it. Because it takes an entire summer to do this. A lot of data entry and we actually needed some help from another company. One thing that we feel like is part of the problem right now that we just found out today is Pratt County did not update theirs yet. So when we look and compare with Pratt County, and I don't know about Edwards County, okay? If Pratt County did not, since they did not update their new soils, they're not going to have some of, the new, some of those new soils that you guys already felt this year. Okay, does that make sense? They, in Pratt County, they might still be on the old soil type, which their value may be different then. That's going to, we, we think that's part of the problem when we look at Stafford and Pratt County now. Because I thought Pratt County did it, but they have not done that. So, you know. Carl's here at Midland, which you think the counties have to update those maps, or is it something that's voluntarily done? The, the, the state actually, they put a memo out, and they could probably put a memo out again in May to remind everybody that the NRCS information is out there. You got to go gather it, you got to go get it. And probably with the state, no, they're not going to slap a county's hand if they don't do it. The only, and, and you know, and I talk. The reason I felt like we should have done it is eventually the way the state could do it, the state could not give us values for those soil types anymore. And now we're out on our own. And then we would and then we wouldn't have the new soils in there. And it's really not fair to you guys if we have access and we have time to update our soil types. It's not fair to you, for you as a taxpayer to have that information out there and us not do our job. So that's why we did it right away, and, and, and that's why we tried to maintain it. Uh, it kind of turned around and bit us, though, didn't it? Uh, because that's what happened with some of the soil. And you're going to see that here in a little bit. Okay. Where are we at? Here. Okay, now we're going to start getting into a couple of a couple of spreadsheets. Now I'm going to pull everybody's parcel up up there, uh, but but if we want, if we had time, we could, we could pull up and, and we could look at your soils and so forth and see what you have. We're going to just use examples tonight, and maybe we'll get more in depth later than with the next meeting. Okay, if we go to this soil right, if this, we go to this one right here. We're going to follow this pretty close. 
Because this is what caused, this is where you're going to see some problems. Should I say problems or issues? Um, and so, this was actually done by the state we, we, property valuation department. The director that put out our values actually put this together for us. They know you guys are upset. They know we're upset. They know our county commissioners are upset. And so at least they didn't sit up and do nothing. They worked on this for three weeks. And they're trying. They're going to try to get it right, but they just need more time. Okay? Okay, so we're going to go over this. The first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk, probably talk about the columns first and then the rows. I said that right. Okay, 2015, that's the acres. I'm just going to go across the top first. Let's go to the row. 2015, there's 422 acres of map unit 5861, which is in the third column over. In 2016, with the new soil overlays, there's 2,863 acres of that soil type 5861. Okay? In 2015, that soil type was $200 an acre. In 2016, it went to $213 an acre. That's typical. That was our typical increase. I mean, well, it's going to be um, landlord net income, and then it would go with the expenses and yields and so forth, and then that's going to be by the cap rate. Um, I'm going to I'm going to throw in the cap rate real quick, and Nita might can answer this better. I'm going to throw her on the spot here. The cap rate, our cap rate in Stafford County. That's how they get that last step to the valuation, okay? Uh, I don't know if anybody in here has heard that old, about the old thing of ERV, um, income, rate, and value, ERV, IRV. Income's on top, rate, and value's on the bottom. If you know the income, you can divide that by the capitalization rate, that gives you a value. If you know, and this works in rental houses, in commercial, it actually works pretty good. If you know a value of a property that you want to purchase, and you know the cap rate, you can see how much income you need to have to, to make that work. Huh? Uh, it's right at 14 right here. Uh -huh. And I don't know if Pony, uh, what uh, Pratt says, but one thing that, I, that I've picked up on today is the estate assessed also has to do with setting that cap rate on the valuation. And I was thinking, part of the reason Pratt County's values might be a little lower than ours, I say a little or a lot, a lot oh, lower than ours, is, does Pratt County get a lot more state assessed? Possibly, because I know Edwards County does. We don't get that much state assessed. Okay, if we don't get that much state assessed and valuation, that might be the problem with Edwards County, actually, now that we talked about, because Edwards County gets like 60% of their value from state assessed over in that field, that gas field, that might actually be something we need to check in with Edwards County. Their cap rate may be a lot lower. Okay? To get that cap rate. And that pen line, that's right. That's right. So, so if, if uh, Pratt County gets a lot more of their valuation because the state assessed, that's going to give us a disadvantage here then because of the cap rate. That's something I don't have the answer to you right now. But I think that could be part of our problem, anyway. Okay, so if we jump across then, 2016, you see a value, you see a $221 value. The new soil type, that's a new soil type, 5902, has 1,111 acres. That soil type came out of the old soil type 5861. So if you had that soil type, you went from $200 an acre to $221 an acre, or a 10.5% increase. And I'm sure everybody here has been happy with the 10.5% increase. As we work our way down, it's going to show even different. Um, if we could jump down to the third and fourth uh, rows, uh, the, the acreage is 62,609 acres. If you notice, then the two columns we have this so we have no acres in the soil type anymore. We put from 62,609 acres to zero. 
That soil type was done away with. So what that tells us is the prior year is $328 an acre. If you go over, you jumped up to $388 an acre if you have soil type 59.60. And you went up, maybe you've seen an 18% increase. If you was in the line above it and you went to soil type 59.44, your price did not change. Your valuation did not change. That's why not everybody's here in the county. Because it depended on how you went from soil type gray to the new soil type. One thing that we are in question about is who done that? How did they do it? And why did they do it? Why did they split Everybody's soil type up here in this front row. Why did they? Everybody had soil type 5910 last year. Why did they put these two at soil type 5960 and left the rest of these at 5944? We don't know because what it did to these two owners is that if they got an 18 percent increase, they did nothing. That's why it's hard when you compare one, one parcel with another. We can't answer that question right now anyway. Okay? Carl? Yeah, Carl. It was the, it was explained to me that the county has <laughs> periodically goes and reviews the soils in your county. And when they go back and look at it, uh, they'll determine in this case that uh, they possibly need to break those soils into two different categories. Okay. Now, how often they do that, I don't know. They just periodically do that. And so that's what would have happened here on there. And then, you know, here later, uh, when they looked at it, they will say that this soil over here, when they broke it, is more productive than the other one, and it will get a value on it, and we use that for some of our purposes for CRP rental rates on there. But uh, they don't do all counties all the time. There's just so many soil scientists in the state, and they just, that's their job, and they go around and periodically review soils. Okay, well, what caused them to think that it's changed? But it needs to be looked at third up. That's a good question. Why why did they do it? Um, it was explained to me that um, you know that they'll go back and they have better methods of doing the stuff now than they used to. You dug a hole so deep and you looked at it and you determined what it was. And um, no, I can't answer that. that they don't have anything else to do with their time. Why would they answer? Well, you know, uh, you know, that's a question for them. But, uh, you know, part, part of it is way over my head. And I, I have some stuff here on how they do it. And um, it had the word fuzzy in it. So you take that for whatever you want. But, uh, you know, it, it was... Defies uh, why? So, I'm not going to argue with that, but that's what I was explaining to you. I How does Kansas Agstat say it's $388 for example here? How does Kansas Agstat arrive at that number? Okay, we're going to get into that here a little bit, okay? Okay. I switched the parcel up there. I can keep switching the parcels up there about 300 That should look pretty familiar to one person in here. But once again, you can see once again when you pull up every parcel, you can see the different soil types going through that parcel. That particular parcel probably seen a 98% increase in valuation this year. The reason I put that one up there is this is where we're going with that um, 2015 acres. I'm at the row now with 52,584 acres. In 2016, after we put the new soil labor over, over that, remember, now we only have 35,156 acres. So we lost right at 17,000 acres. Where did they go? 
when we went to another soul type. Okay? Prior year, it was a soul type 5928. This soul type here is probably affecting just, probably just about everybody in here. This one right here. Um, your prior year was 100, in 2015 was $120 an acre. If you were one of those happy people in that 35,000 acre category, your value went from $120 to $128. Kind of your typical increase from one year to the other. If you were not, you know, 17,008, 17,339 acres went to soil type 5906, and you went to $238 an acre. That's why a lot of you are in here on that soil type right there. So you went from $120 an acre, you did nothing to it, you would recategorize, and you went to $238 in one year. Okay? Which was a 98.33% increase. This is going to get a little worse here. Okay? I'm going to skip the next one because there's not that many acres there. I did actually went down. Anybody in here had that soil type? <laughs> Probably not. Okay. Uh, second from the bottom, we had 300, I'm sorry, 36,313 acres. In 2015, 2016, it dropped to 29,597 acres. You was soil type 5935. If you stayed there, you went from $73 an acre to $79 an acre. This is not very good. This is not very good soil, right? Not very good at all. At $73 an acre. Okay. If you was one of the uh, unlucky people that owned some of that 6,905 acres. You went to a brand new soil type of 5905, and you went from $73 an acre to $221 an acre. Mr. This is down real close to his area. This is real. This is this is not as you've seen prior. This is not good real good soil. But now it's been resold, re and we're going to get into that. Stand up the line with that. He really understands that part. Um, this affected all of you guys too. So, some of you went up like 160%. What that would typically tell you is that if you had, so, if say you had, you would have a higher percentage of that soil type than you had of the soil type that went up 18%. Does that make sense? If the majority of your property was in a, a soil type that didn't go up as high percent-wise, it would lower that percent. But if most of your acres was in that soil type that took this huge jump, you're gonna, that's when you're going to see that 160%. Okay? So now we go to another one. Now this is a soil type that I'm going to kind of agree with them on. Okay? I am going to say that. This is the soil type. This is the bottom one. We had 42,670 acres. Now we have 30,965 acres, and that's soil type 6330. Last year it was at $76 an acre. This year it went to $92 an acre. If you were in that category of 30,000 acres. If you fell into the new soil type of 5961, which is 10,713 acres, your price went to $169 an acre or 122%. And we're going to look at the, here a little bit, we're going to look at the last uh, sheet here. And Mary, we might turn the lights on for that. And I think all of them, the, the outside two go up, is how the middle one stays down. Because the next spreadsheet's got a lot of information on it. We had a question on how these values were derived at. Remember, they look at that eight years, of 2007 to 2014. They look at a lot of information. Whether they're, what do you call it, Tony? Funny money. Funny money, okay. Uh, whether you feel like it's funny money or not, it's, this is how it's done. I think it's important that you guys know kind of how it's done. We don't know everything that's put into it. I don't know that. 
Dan doesn't know that because it has good value. But it does have to do with landlord net income, expenses, commodity prices, yield, and so forth and so forth. Okay? So, that kind of covers this sheet. You might want to keep this handy, though, to uh, when we look at the next spreadsheet. So, if you want to give the person beside you this or, or on the chair or something. Um, I can answer this question. Okay. The question on why are soils sometimes reevaluated? The example of the 6330 soil is a very good example of why it's reevaluated. Originally, that soil, the reference soil was a swamp in Oklahoma, is where the reference soil for this 6330 symbol was. It, it was a swamp in Oklahoma. And so they use that here. And so then we had a value, Carl did, on his stuff as waste grain. Well, I can just look south here across the railroad tracks and see 6330 soil. And as irrigation circles on there, I don't think that it is swamp soil. So that is why sometimes they go back and reevaluate and break stuff down when, yes, that is a problem on that originally, and they are trying to get more in tune of how productive that is. So that is the answer to the question. How often do they do that? Periodically is all I can tell you. I don't do it. That's NRCS does that. And uh, Carl, you know, here four years ago, five years ago, four years, four years ago, uh, he had the question on the valuations on this soil, and he came and talked to me about it, and we worked on it, and we finally got a hold of the right people, and the Department of Revenue people said, okay, yeah, probably it's wrong. We're not going to fix it. And let Carl uh, fix it somewhat to be more equitable with taxpayers. Because, you know, hey, I want it to be swamp, but is that really fair when it's not? And so they gave us a reference soil at that time, and we used that, he used that rate for both irrigated and dry, because that's all he could do at that time. And as we're going along, some of this is getting fixed, and that's this last example on here, on uh, this sheet here, that part of it's being fixed, has been fixed, still got a ways to go. Okay, now we're going to go to this spreadsheet that old Stan put together. A lot of numbers, a lot of time. Okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to try to show you up here. This, this area all the way to the, to, the, um, to the left is going to be the soil types. Um, they're not in order. What is it? Stafford County is highlighted on all three charts since we're in Stafford County. They are, this is actually uh, rated from the lowest rating, the soil rating. Soil rental rate, CRP soil rental rate. Okay. So this is from Stan. For the lowest to the highest. The highest number shows that it would be a better producing, better landlord net income type of thing. So this is, he has Edward on the top of it, Connie, Barton, Pratt, Stafford, Reno, and Rice. Okay? So everybody kind of follows that there. Now all these counties have these soil types and that's why they do blank on those counties. Over to the middle part, the middle area. Uh, you see Edwards, Pawnee, Barton, Pratt, Stafford, Reno, and Rice again. Once again, Stafford is highlighted. And all, all the way over to the right, there's three counties, Pratt, Stafford, and Reno counties. All the way over here, the header is uh, NCCPI, which stands for National Commodity Cr Crop Productivity Index. Okay? <coughs> It'd be a quiz on that there with that's, <laughs> that's a long one. Okay. So now we're getting into the values. Now we're getting into some of this stuff. 
if you look at Let's go back to this here sheet. This one here. This is where you might have your friend out here. If you look at soil type 59.8, which is right in the center, and it's dark. The dark ones are typically a problem. <laughs> the dark gray. So it's in the middle. So 59.28, uh, you can come across. And if you look, there's a value over in, in, in Stafford County that's highlighted, $128 an acre. Remember that $128 an acre? That's what uh, the new value is, remember? It went from $120 to $128 an acre. Okay? But remember, some of you guys switch soils. You went down to the soil type 5906. Uh, happens to be in dark gray also. It's the fourth from the bottom, dark gray. And if you look at Stafford County, it's $238 an acre. So those numbers are going to, if anybody needs help, holler. Uh, those numbers are going to correspond to what we have on this sheet on how the state set those values. Now, if Stan wants to go into this, if you keep going all the way over, on that soil type 59.28, it had a national commodity crop production index was point, point two nine nine. Okay, that soil was redone. It was re-categorized. Is that word? Categorized to to a rating of point four one six. Okay, that's why that value jumped up. It was it was updated. It was seen to, to that it needed a new rating, so it was it was kicked up. And that's that soil type. Remember that went up ninety eight percent. That every that affected everybody in here. That's what happened to you guys. That's why it went up. Um, if this was on a house, my only example would be is I felt like my value was too low the prior year. And there was, that was the only reason that it went up, is that I felt like your value was inaccurate. This is kind of the same thing. They updated that soil by their data and felt like it was too low of a rating and they bumped it up. As if you remember, one of these other soils went down. So they felt like that soil was wrong the other way, so to speak. Okay, uh, let's look at this one. If I can find this one here. We can find 5935. Okay, there it is. It's the, from the top, it's the one, two, fourth dark gray. If you go over to Stafford County value, and I, shine, I have $79. Is that what everybody else has? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now let's drop down and find 5905. It's not highlighted. We actually just found this was a, was a problem. It's right above the 1, 2, 3, 4 from the bottom. It's right above 5906. The dark, the, the 4 from the bottom, gray, dark gray. It's right above that. It's the 5905. Remember, that soil type was changed. So you went from a rating of 2.89 all the way up to 4.36. That's why that price went from $79 an acre to $221 an acre. So as you can see, you can, you can disagree with a lot of things. You can agree with some of it because it does make somewhat, to me, it makes sense. Um, but when you look at the Pratt County line, we can look at some of these <coughs> compared to the Stafford County line. That's probably when you're going to get upset. Okay? If we look at the soil, actually, you know what? It doesn't matter what soil type it looks like if you're going to compare it to Pratt County. You can pick any of them. Um, but let's pick one so we're on the same page. If we stay with that 5906, that's that dark gray, uh, fourth from the bottom. 
Uh, our price is $238 an acre. Uh, Pratt County, right beside you, is $183 an acre. You're at a pretty well disadvantage if you're competing as a farmer on the tax part of it. Right off the bat, before you throw in the mill levies or anything, you're at, you're, the mill levies have nothing to do with this. The market values have nothing to do with this. You're already at a disadvantage if you look at your expenses and taxes. Okay. Um, let's find one that has. If you guys want to go down to, um, to try to stay on. Well, I'm trying to find one with. Uh, here's one. Fifty nine sixty four. If you go from the bottom, there's three dark gray ones. It's the second one above the third dark gray one. So it's at fifty nine sixty four. Edwards County. They pay $153 an acre in taxes. Pawnee County pays $190 an acre in taxes. Is everybody okay where we're at? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Barton County does not have that soil. Pratt County pays $240 an acre. But lo and, ho lo and behold, Stafford County pays $318 an acre. We can do that all night long with every one of these. Um, I didn't want to show you this one, but I will show you this one because this this may be the worst one. And this is where Sam stretches his his head. It's the the last dark gray one to the bottom. Somebody already seen it because I heard him laughing. It's uh, Edwards County does not have that soil. Pawnee County pays two hundred four dollars for taxes per acre. Barton County pays $332 an acre. Pratt County pays $291 an acre. We pay $401 an acre. And then Reno drops back down to $343 an acre. And where we scratch our head is if you look over to the National Commodity Crop Productivity, <coughs> it's, it's all the same. It should be categorized pretty close with the same profit, so to speak, landlord net income. If you look over to the, the first columns to the left, you can even look at the SRR ratings that Stan put on there. Uh, Edwards County is 71, Pawnee is 72, Barton 71, 61, Pratt 64, Word 71, Reno's at 80, and look at those soil prices that per acre, and you really scratch your head with the last three, Pratt, Stafford, and Reno, where Reno has actually a better rating, but yet they're $60 lower per acre. That's what we feel like we are way out of whack and that we need this to be looked at. Um, Stan and I kind of have an idea of what these should drop to, uh, but we can't drop them around we can't do that. Um, so, this is kind of where we're at. Um, here, look at where we're asked for questions. That was, uh, I do have another one, don't I? One more. <coughs> you guys are probably getting all. Uh, this next sheet, there's some on there's, there's two examples on the front and one example on the back. And this is going to pretty well do it for to show you guys where we're at. There's three parcels. There's going to be 2015. It's going to compare 2015 and 2016. That's the same parcel, okay? That's the same taxpayers, exact, same parcel. One was in 15 with the older soil types, and one in 2016 is with the newer soil types. If you look on there to make sure we're all on the same thing, if you look all the way over to the to the right, on 2015, there's gonna be a, yep, there's gonna be a bold value of eleven thousand four hundred and seventy dollars. If you go up below it, their value went up to nineteen thousand five hundred, I'm sorry, nineteen thousand yeah, five hundred and sixty dollars for this one taxpayer. You can actually visually see and you can kind of compare these by the number of acres. Is in 2015 the second column was 62.38 acres at sold on 59.28. Down right there. 
you can go all the way over to the right and you see a $7,490 value with the new soil layers over the same parcel that we did over the summer. It took that soil type, remember, to 5906 and it kicked their value to $14,840 because it had a different soil. So that's an example right there. And the reason I'm giving you this stuff is, is if you can see it, you have to believe it like I do. You know, I, mean, I mean, I think it's more, it, it lets you see what's going on. And once again, you don't have to like it. And, and, and we're going we're gonna to ask the questions here in a little bit. And if we can't answer them, we're going to take those questions on to the uh, property valuation department. Maybe some questions Stan will take to his, his other people. And then we're going to, we'll probably have to have another meeting to get this done. I'm going to tell you guys in here right now, this has never been done successfully since 1989. Just to let you know. Once the values are set, this hasn't been done successfully. That's why we needed everybody to be here. That's why we need you in quantities. Um, I'm hoping we get something done. I hope they can go in and they can look at every parcel. And we're going to pick up some more parcels tonight to see how many people are very, very dissatisfied with the way it's done. Okay? But I do, I do want to emphasize as much as I feel like we do have a problem in our values, you guys, we got to be careful because this is probably the best system that states that have a lot of agricultural can do. Um, you know, Mr. Wilson here, uh, we don't want to go to market value. We don't want that system at all. If you remember, people are pushing to get that done. We will have a nightmare. Plus, you have to go to the Constitution, we have to change the Constitution because you can't be taxed at 30 percent and market value um, because your taxes instead of would being three thousand you know maybe two thousand dollars would be like sixteen thousand um, dollars. Last year they also tried to do an excise tax of three dollars per acre. That failed, but that may come has that been anybody I haven't seen that too. Okay, okay. Uh, that went away uh, but what they wanted to do, which would have really been bad for you guys, for us, because that $3 extra on the excise tax, the $3 was going to be on your tax bill. It was going to be collected by the county treasurer. That's here now. But the entire $3 was going to Topeka. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did have a question earlier of, of on your real estate taxes, how much of those taxes do go out of, out of county and goes to the state of uh, to the Topeka? Of your total mill levy, and I'm just going to use a, any mill levy, say your average mill levy in your township was 130 mills. Okay? Only 1.5 mills, which is a very small portion, goes to the state of Kansas. This is one tax that does stay here. It goes to your townships, it goes to your fire, it goes to your uh, county, your school. If you live in the city, it goes to your city. Low, uh, real estate taxes do stay at home, except for 1.5 mills it goes to Topeka. So, on there. Do we want to go over any more? Or does everybody kind of got the hang of this? Um, so, Right now, we've been doing this for an hour. Uh, this here parcel, once again, we can pull these up all day. Um, once again, you can see where we try to bring, where we do break it out is what's, what's crop ground and what's pasture ground. The soil types come through there, but yet we still have the land use too, because once again, if you go back to this original sheet, the grasslands at a different value than your crop ground or your irrigation. You pull up the irrigation below it. Because I think there's one up there. But uh, some things in through there. Um, being all these circles, everybody's familiar with soil types. Those little circles are a part of your problem. Those soil types have been combined or spread apart. 
or what have you, and it's in that part of the county. So here I'll give that. Um, I mean, I, I guess I, I'm going to I'm sorry we have to do this. Uh, I've been doing this for 36 years, and I've never ran into this before. This kind of increases. So this is new to me, too, on how to get these changed. Um, and we're not going to get help from Pratt County. We're not going to get help from any of these counties because you can see why they're not going to join and help us. Now, Pratt might want to know how we did this when they ever put that new layer on. They're going to have this problem whenever they do it. Um, you're not going to get the north part of the county to help you because their values went up 12 to 14 percent. They're happy with that when we did hear about you guys' problem. Um, so it's really you guys right here is, 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 is who's going to try to get this changed. So um, the way I wanted to do it uh, may not work. After we're going to this. If we go, if we take these all to the Board of Tax Appeals, okay, so everybody knows that, that I'm not going to change the value, right? Everybody already knows that, that I can't change the value. If, if your soil types are correct, and we have the right acreage, I can't change the value. I'm going to, say, I'm going to do no change. Okay, that's, and then, you're, then we're going to help you appeal it to the Board of Tax Appeals. And then we're going to use the county attorney to, be, to represent you. Because when you go to the Board of Tax Appeals, you need some representation, don't you? Yeah. I mean, you do. Because what you're going to do is you're going to get, you're going to get emotional. You're going to get mad. And, and and you're going to lose from that right away. I'm going to tell you you're going to lose anyway. But, but there is another way, and it's, it's going to be this route right here, is I think the route that we will go if we don't get anywhere. We may not go this route until probably we let the state see if they're going to fix any of this first or help us get these values corrected a little bit. Uh, what we're going to go by is we're going to go by Kansas Statute 79 13 a if anybody want to look it up. I think you can, all the stats of statutes now are on the internet. Is that right? Aren't they all on? Yeah. Um, so you're going to pull up Kansas Statute 79 14 13a. It was actually revised in, what edition is this, 15? And what it, what it says is, and we can do this as a group, and this is the reason I want to do it like this, is <coughs> what, what we're going to be asking for is for a total reappraisal of property within the county for those soil types. So what that would mean is our county attorney is going to have to help us do the paperwork. There won't be, <coughs> you can get your own attorney if you want to, but you're going to have to pay your own attorney. We're going to use the county attorney, and there, then there won't be any attorney fees on top of your valuation. Okay? So we're going to go under that statute, and we're going to ask for those handful of soils to be corrected. We still may not win. But what that would do, though, is for somebody that, that didn't come here, or somebody that, that, that doesn't really know, or know, they don't want to get involved, there's always a handful of people that don't want to get involved. They're just going to pay the bill. If we go with this statute, you guys are going to help take care of them. Then. Because we're going to change that entire soil type for those 35,000 acres. Or for those 16,000 acres. Whatever it might be. If we go the other route, through the Board of Tax Bills, it'll take care of you, or you, or you, and it won't take care of everybody. And I don't, and I don't really like that way. Uh, I'd really try to take care of everybody. So that's kind of where we're going with this. But once again, that's why we've got everybody's phone number. Uh, when we hear something, uh, we could do maybe, I don't know, a mass mailing or something uh, that, something like that. Uh, one thing that I thought of, if they say, say just for example, and I'm, I'm not saying this to get your hopes up. I'm just saying we have to have a plan in place if something happens. But one thing that I thought that might be cheaper for us 
is send everybody an evaluation notice. That way you know. You can actually see what it did from last year, what your new value is. If you want to keep your old one and staple to it, that's up to you guys. But that's the best theory that we came up with um, to do that because we only have to mail it to, as you can see, a handful of, there's still a lot of parcels. It's going to be like, what, 500 parcels? Five, six hundred parcels if we can get this changed uh, instead of mailing the, the six thousand parcels that we have. Uh, okay, that's been an hour. Question. Uh, question. Yeah. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. You want a microphone? No. Sorry, can, can you guys hear me? Uh, you have to speak up. You had it. Heard it out here. So I you have to say it. It was plastered. Something and it changed the class. They can say it doubles the income that they say it produces. How did they get to that? Okay. How do they justify saying 100 percent more production? system, you know, to get to gather the data. Um, so that would be one way to do it. We, I've asked him to actually call them and join on the survey since he owns in Edwards and in Pawnee, and he keeps pretty good records from what I've seen. And he can put some, some input possibly into at least the survey part for Kansas State Ag and Statistics. And I think he'll call them. Uh, will it help you now? No, it won't help you now, but it'll help in the future. So what Stan's saying is somewhere along the line, they seen that data that kept creeping out that that certain soils needed to be split. And then that's where they generated the new, the new soils with the new ratings. That's where it came in to a new value. That's, that's all I can answer. That front of the, I need to say that. Uh -huh. Yes. Is there any venue in going in and checking some way NRCS's determination of soil type? Because they moved a lot of stuff around. That's a lot, isn't it? From my understanding, uh, the people that pretty much do this are out of Salina. Because that's who Carl talked to before that we got um, on this here four years ago. And, uh, and, you know, in, in an example from four years ago, what the, and I have no idea how the state could come up with this revenue for that soil when it was obviously not a swamp out here. And, you know, they, they gave us the soil that we, Carl used for that. For stuff that we do, FSA for, CRP program, what they had, we didn't use at all, you know, because we had $47 stuff on here, for example, and not $10. But, uh, well, I mean, what I'm saying is Carlisle finds Sandy Loan is still Carlisle finds Sandy Loan. It did right. not change. Yeah, I, I have. Clear over here to the side of this is the what they're calling the soils there, and you go down through there, and, and I'm, I'm assuming they renamed something a little bit as they 
They had to rename her to yeah, reclassify them. Classification. So how come it changed after a hundred years? That's a question, that's a very good question. Fred, I don't know. Some stuff's wrong. Some stuff's wrong. And, you know, looking back at old soils books from the 60s or whatever, you know, you open it up and you look, and the lines don't change that much on their new layer. Uh -huh. And I had an example here down in the south part of the county where one quarter, it used to be the same soil, they broke it down, and there's probably a 200, 300 foot strip in between where they broke them, and one is this $250 stuff, and on the other side of the humper, out of the hole, it's the $100, $120. Now, you know, I didn't do it. I don't know how they determined that, but I, I brought one here, and I looked at it, and I went, I have no idea. Well, I got an example. I have a quarter that's in the 1840s, and I got flipping across it, and it's all fine blow sand, and they have grossly different values on it by the 40. Yeah. Do you have those with you by any chance? Uh-huh. Do you mind if we pull it up and let everybody see it by any chance? And, and the reason why that could be a, an advantage is let's look at those soil types and let's see what happens. Um, anybody else have a question while he's getting that white? How often does your NCCPI number change? Does that change annually? Stan, does that even change? Or is that I mean, as far as... Uh, I, I think that it... Uh, but my... And, I'm kind of pulling this off the top of my head, but I think it's set when they would reevaluate the soils, and you go from a 0.01 to 1.0 in the best soil that there is in the United States. Well, because they're not all consistent. And, and, and that, that's a very good question. And, and, and I asked. Okay. Okay. Here's the other one. The, the question is that when we look at the chart, not all of the three counties I listed have the same. Index for the uh, productivity index, and they're supposed to. I think that's a problem. Yeah. But but they, they should be the same. But they're obviously not. I didn't know that changed annually. Or... No, I, I don't think it changes once it's set and unless they're redoing something. But from the same soil crossing county lines should have the same index. So our NRCS does that. And you sure blame a lot of stuff. I do. Hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stan, so if it changed in 89, if this is the next change, then, right? Is that what you're saying? Pardon? Uh, Carl said it changed in 89, so it hasn't changed since 89. No, 89 is when reappraisal started. Oh, this is the worst change. appeal. Yes. I think you said. Yes. Okay, yes. Yeah, that was a successful appeal of, of reappraisal. Okay. So when was the last change? See, I'm, 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 I'm not exactly sure. I, if I was to, okay, I'm going to guess, okay? Because um, we have, when we converted to this system in 2009, we actually downloaded the new soils at that point. That's for us anyway. So we went from 2009 to 2015, which affected you in 16 taxes. Did that? Yeah. Okay, this is, this is the one And this is the one in question right here. This is uh, irrigation. It's, it's the north half, right? And then this other parcel is the south half? No, there's three parcels there. Okay, okay. 180 and 240s. Okay. <coughs> there's, the, there's the 80. And the 240s are below it, right? Yeah. 
Okay. All right, so we're going to look at this one here first for him, okay? Up here with the soil type. It's the irrigation. Okay, and if you guys have your chart or have your thing, we don't have to hit the high one. His value right now, and you're all right with me saying this, right? Huh? You're all right with this? Me saying the value? Oh, yeah. Okay. His prior year value was $22,590. Now, what he's going to do is he didn't see the large increase, but what he's going to see is a big difference between 280s, I mean 240s, and 180. Is that what you want me to show, right? Yeah. Because his 80 acres is appraised at $24,820. Then he has a 40 on the same pivot. I should look that up there. Four, uh, one of them is $19,470. The other one is $16,140. So he's looking at $35,000, almost $36,000 for an 80 compared to $24,000 on an 80. That's the same circle. Okay? Okay. That's a good one. <laughs> Okay, so you can because I don't have I can't I'm not gonna do a split screen here. So for those that have pencils, uh, he has twenty eight point nine five acres of soil type fifty nine oh six, which is the new soil type, right? And you don't have that on your sheet though. Um, uh, yes you do, you have it on this this one right here. Sorry, I forgot I gave this to you guys. You gotta go to this one here then. Okay, if you go to the soil type 5906, you're going to have to go way over to the orange. So on this soil type, he went from $399 an acre to $438 an acre, which is, our county has 6.2% of our county is that soil type. So if you want to, circle that $438, or why don't you put a square around it, and then we go to these other parcels, you can put a circle around those, that way you know which one has... So if you put a square around that one, then you got to look at soil type 5907. His majority, it went from $321 an acre up to $354 an acre. I'm going to put a, whatever you want on that. He's got that 6330 soil. That's on the actually on the second page. That went from $76 to $92. That's that soil type that's not very good. That's the soil type we were talking about that used to be at waste ground at $10 an acre. Okay, so we're going to leave this parcel here. Okay, so we're going to go to the next parcel. This is actually, this is probably a good example. Okay, now we're going to go to one of the 40-acre tracks, okay? His value on this here, this was the 19470 He's got the 5906, 5907, and 5954. 5944, I'm sorry. 5944. That went to $439 an acre. And probably what this is going to amount to is the number of acres for that soil type. Because that's going to make a big difference on where these values go, remember? If you have majority of this one here is 5906, right, on the irrigation, it's 28.11 acres of irrigation, what's that? 5906 soil. He's at that $438 an acre. Okay, let's go to the next. What we'll probably have to do, uh, Fred, on these here is actually print the sheets out individually and look at them so we and look at the number of acres per soil type. 
and compare it to that one poor soil type of, at $92 an acre. That $92 an acre is going to pull that way down per acre. Now let's see. Are these gross revenues or net revenues? Uh, this would be net. Was it net revenues? Mm -hmm. To set the price. And then on the last one, he has the same soil type. What it's going to be is what we talked about earlier is, Fred, we go back to that first one. These 280s don't have that soil type 6330. So if we need to go back previous, and let's see how many acres was in that 6330 soil type. Because that was the common difference. That was the only difference, really. Let me go back to that first one. Because what I want to look at is I want to see how many acres was in that 6330 soil. Discrepancy. You have 20 acres, almost 21 acres of your total irrigation on that north half that is only going to be was it $92? Yeah. $92 an acre. Of your other, of the ones on the bottom, you, you had nothing lower than $439 an acre. So how many acres? It's going to take four of that acres to even match one acre. So you're on a one to four ratio. That's why that's lower. Does everybody understand that? So somewhere on that, and I, and I can't pull it up right now. I don't have the, the icons on here. But somewhere on one of these soils, right up through here, I would say, I would say it would be this soil type right here because this soil type does not go down on the south part. Right? We didn't have soil type 6330 on the bottom. We had it on the top. So I would assume that this soil type right here is your 6330. If we would probably compare this one with this parcel up here, that, because I think that 6330 is going to shoot up through here. So this would be more comparable to this one and not your bottom, even though it's the same circle. That's where you're going to have to... And see, as a farmer, he knows that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Carl, oh, these numbers like that, say, uh, $438. Yeah. Is that capitalized or not? That's for the capital. First thing. Yes. Yeah. Because actually, you can't get... If you look at that formula... So these numbers are capitalized. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You actually can't get a value without using a capital. Because you're using income to get the capital. So you have to make that more sustainable to get to it. Yeah. Otherwise, you just have that. Yeah, cap, yes. Thanks, Brad. I'll tell you some discrepancies in the presentations. If I might admit it, I think we're. We get on the back. Um, What's the Portland County? Is it Meade County way down in the bottom by Elk or whatever? They actually paid, they got, if I'm not mistaken, they replugged that county. Is it Morton? Okay, I think it was Morton County. Um, but they paid for that. The county paid for it. Uh, they had so many discrepancies and they got upset enough, but the county had to fund that to replug it. And that seems like that's been five, six years ago. I think that's what happened. Uh, other counties didn't follow suit because, of course, they couldn't justify the cost of doing that. 
Uh, you know, I think they did some things, but you know, just like in, 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 in any like reappraisal or anything like this, uh, I'm sure there were some people that come out on the short end of the stick that they got their soil types. They they might instead of having a low value, they might have got kick type. Do so you know a number of how many counties went through this in the last year in the state of Kansas? Uh, what we're doing? Yes. Okay, now to answer your question, every county has 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 had new values. Right. But not every county how many has done that them. Is my question. I would have Mr. to and didn't. I would have to I can find that out because uh, the state does know that. Because we okay, have my to, next question is squiggly lines per quarter. Uh -huh. When were they drawn and who drew them? Which designates the type of soil mm -hmm. on each quarter. Who who did that? Uh, the end of National Resource Conservation. And when was that done? Ours, and what I think was done yeah. is, yeah, I think ours was completed in, uh, Stan, I don't believe, but this could be that date on the bottom of this map. Okay. My because we because we downloaded this in May. Who has the data that says this great soil that Fred's talking about now he has so much of is worth what they say it is? Uh, who, who determines that? Property valuation department. That's they have that to back it up. It's really that valuable soil. When it kind of changed the okay. way. Information fed to them, but and thanks, Dad. Yes, sir. It comes from both those that in organization. Kansas State had the statistics. Remember, they did okay. the the okay. eight year, and then they give that data then to the state of Kansas property valuation department, and by statute then. The director has to set values for each county. Okay. So those two organizations will have it. Okay. And that's one thing that will probably come out when if we go this route. If we use that game statute set 1413A and we ask for our county to be re reappraised. Okay. And, and it won't be the entire county, it will be, we might specify six soil types or eight soil types or something of that nature. How did they arrive? Did they walk this ground? I don't know. Did they come up with these? No. And how do they know how much of it? Well, actually, that ground. Okay, that's what, if you guys remember when I used this front row as an example, we don't know where these, why these guys got separated to the new soil type and these guys stayed. We don't know. I, I can't answer that. I don't know how they did <coughs> where they're going to split. And, and we know they split it because of this sheet right here that the state gave us. Because if we can look at that one soil type uh, with 52,584 acres, we now only have 35,000 acres, and we have 17,000 acres of a new soil type. Because in all those years you talked about, my mom's ground is in our ground now, been uh, CRP, CPR, okay. income grass. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's made the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. So it's income is not going at all. So how can this grass, how does land all of a sudden be worth more if our income is the same? And, and, and I'm sorry, I can't. That's why I'm, that's why we're doing this. Carl? Well, that's our question is, yeah. you know, what's, what's changed? You know, I, you know we're, we're going back to surveys. Mm -hmm. That you guys throw in the trash most of the time. Except for Mr. Smith's first one. Yeah. And, and uh, then, you know, looking at the uh, values, I was third down here at the bottom. And the one that Pawnee County had $204 and we have $401. You know, I'm looking at it and going, well, you know, Stafford County Farmers must be twice as good. To get twice the net revenue well, off of it. That's the county farm is always produced 250 no. more than every county. We get 250 percent smarter. We we we, 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 we don't wait on the survey thing. I <laughs> <laughs> see. We, we currently have programs that the first thing that is looked at and determined how much money we pay Stafford County farmers are those surveys that no one fills out. And so then when no one fills them out, there's not the data there. And then maybe they go and look at uh, crop insurance records, maybe.
and see what kind of yields people have there. And then if there's nothing there, then from what I've read, uh, in some places in the United States, they look over here and says, well, that's a $100 payment, and these over here is nothing, I guess we'll give you 50 for it. And that's kind of the way it works. But the thing is, these surveys have become very important on what both of us work with. Well, if I was making kind of money, the state says I am, I'd be driving a new truck. Right. Well, and <laughs> you fill out the surveys, and they will have better data if they're going to continue to use them. Or, or, or it's going to be more data to pick from. It may not be better data, but it will be more. It's every year. How often the surveys? Damn. It's every year. Because remember, we're taking one year out and putting it in a new year. So it's every year. Not every year? Yes, sir. Every single year. You pour all kinds of ground. Your gate is dry. And you know, I'm sure that's going to depend on what kind of straw it is and the year they do the survey. Well, I, I think since, since they're probably the experts on that, I hope they do that. If I'm not mistaken, you can tell me whether I'm wrong or right. When we went up there to the Board of Tax Appeals, you asked that question, and did they not say, was it like 1,200 surveys? Is that, do you think? They didn't say. But didn't I they, asked how many surveys. Did they, they estimate, didn't Zell guesstimate like 1,200 yeah, surveys guess. per year? <coughs> when, I We're trying to survey for when I asked them how many surveys they sent out, they had no clue. I thought the types of soil is not always the same in the survey. Some is dry, some is irrigated. Well, one, year, one year is irrigated survey, the next year no. dry well, survey. It would have to be, it would have to be a, a combination because we would have to have that information for grass, irrigation, and for grass. Should have it, yeah. do you? Yeah. Well, if they didn't, they couldn't have that year in because the Kansas State would be sued. How do we know? Well, we didn't. We don't. <laughs> Every year. Sure. When these surveys are done, there are people from the state, they, they come into our office almost every year, and they get certain people's folders, and they look through them and put the labels, and I don't know what all they do, but you know they're checking some of that stuff with what records we have. And, uh, you know, the the uh, ARC program, you know, we never know how much money we're going to pay. If we went to Edwards County, they pretty much know how much money they're going to get for their 2015 payments. Uh, it was told to us that not enough people have completed the surveys so that they can't get a number for dry land corn and irrigated corn. There's not enough data from these surveys to come up with those numbers so that Craig Fisher would know how much he's going to get this thing come October. So if there isn't that information available to him, what do they do? Then the second thing was they get this stuff from uh, risk management, crop insurance. I think they should be getting there to start with. It's all there. It's accurate. <coughs> you know, and that's in the law uh, with the Corn Bill when it was passed. And, they will use the NAS stuff just as you're using NAS stuff for what Carl does. Does that involve the expenses of the operation? No. More no. no. Well, I, I, don't know, I don't know what's all on the surface. The expenses are included. I'm, I'm talking production. I understand production is accessible. Yes. But the expenses are not. I don't know if that's on the surveys. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> you suppose the reason Rice County is the only one comparable to Stafford County is because they're the only other county that's updated and done the layer? You know, Rice County could have. Uh, I think with Rice County, are they in our. They don't no. Have to, no, no. Okay, we'll say we're Rice County, and, and, and this could vary. Uh, what I would probably say, sir, is, is they're going to be in the more water different soil groups and so forth. So I think they're going to be actually updated a little bit more than we are. Uh, because they're actually, 
you know, in the south part of the room, where they're going to actually fall into some things with Dickens and Kelly. Did you do Connie Kelly? Uh, yes. Okay, so you could compare apples to apples. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, we did fall in. Was there any changes like this in Connie Kelly? Uh, no. And we did Ellsworth. Uh, we're actually going to do Ellsworth this year because our soil layer wasn't good enough to do it yet. So. Uh, but, but Ellsworth will be done this year. Maybe. Have you talked to the Fraser and Pratt County to know when they're planning on this? No, because I actually just found out today that they didn't do it. Um, probably in the near future before we go on, we'll find out what, what plans are. Yeah. yeah, that's good. You got Carl, to follow up on that again. I don't quite understand how it happened in Stafford County. Is it voluntary that you apply these new soil types? Or, I mean, how does the state of Kansas look at this when so many people have been dramatically impacted mm -hmm. with increases? That's why I asked how many counties did it. I mean, was it voluntary that a county did it? Who, who's running it from the state level back to the county level as to whether or not this was done this time? There's, there's a lot of things that memos are put out that they, they, they recommend doing, you know, to do this. Um, and once we found out, once I found out that Stafford County was ready, right. that's, when I, that's when we implemented it and we had the time to do this. Yeah. We had the, the resources and that's why we did it here. So I, I did ask the question, how many counties in the state of Kansas did it this last time? And I'm going to find out the answer to that. And, and again, I think fair and reasonable is what, probably what everybody in this room is just trying to look at. It just seems unfair that somebody gets a 90 to 100 or 200 percent increase when other counties have done. People don't. It just doesn't seem fair. Yeah, I understand what I've done. <laughs> The only, you know, to, to flip-flop this, to flip-flop it, at the time I did this, or time we did this in the, in the, in the Brady's offices, we did not know the outcome. Yeah. We was trying to do our job to get your values and your data correct, which probably there's a handful of people, by looking at that one soil type, that that might have been overpaying or, or, or there, that needed to be updated. There's a handful, like... Already gone. But whenever you do something, there's going to be a group that's going to profit from it, and there's going to be this group that did not profit from it. But just because Carl updated it doesn't explain the whole problem. Oh, I agree. Because there's the soils on here that there's no reason why Stafford County's is twice the value as Pawnee's, right. or a third more than. Right. Agreed. Well, that kind of back to what I spoke about in my trailer is measuring things versus Stafford County. Mm -hmm. I'm producing the same, literally the same revenue in both counties, but my trailer was two and a half times higher here than in Stafford County. And we're, we're Fred and we're generating the same revenue. Where we looked at Fred's a little bit ago in the same, same irrigation, I mean, if you turn those off, let's just turn that layer off. I mean, you would, there's that there's that circle right there. You'd probably just think this is going to be equal. This is going to be taxed the same as the, there's going to be. Everybody's going to be happy and, and, and go on. But you turn those layers on, and that's where you that's where you become the different dollars per acre. And that's and that's how we do it in Kansas. Uh, market values. And this is where we, I, where we would run into problems. Uh, those soil lines wouldn't mean one darn thing to us. Uh, this here old Hope Irrigation might one year be, you know, $6,500 an acre, the next year drop to $4,500 an acre. It doesn't matter where it sits. It doesn't matter if you have no access. Uh, right now, if you did market value, would that be important to you? What kind of access you have? I mean, there's all kinds of problems with market value. Um, that's why I'm hoping we can keep the best system. Hopefully, the people will agree and keep us at the ag use values. And, and on on our values that we have, you know, our our procedure says that it's supposed to be comparable.
cross county lines? It's not. And you know, my question is, why is it not? And they always come back to, we go off of what the surveys have told us. And it says, but the surveys apparently aren't right. Someplace it's not right. And why can we not make an adjustment to it? And the answer is, we can't. The other thing, former sheriff of county, most of the state of Kansas, but he's making twice the money as Kyle Edwards County. <clears throat> yeah. He's no. not going to admit that. I know it's getting later, but um, just out of curiosity, because I have some family up in Phillips County, and so I looked at over the weekend, I, I compared the district here with Phillips County and Norton County, because I really thought I was going to see a huge difference because where Phillips County is compared with these counties way over here that has rainfall and, and different things, different soils, and then poor Norton County was compared with way over right on the state lines. If you looked at those two counties, it, it's almost perfect flow from one county to the other of the soil types that switched counties. They was like one soil type in one county was $176 an acre. The other county was 173. If the other county had a price of 120 dollars an acre, the other county had 125. It was perfect, and I'm thinking, and they're in a different crop. They're in a different uh, mm -hmm. district. We're comparing with the same counties in the same district, and ours is, as you can see, just sad. So I think it can work. I think. That's why I think we have a problem. And that's why I think we want to get it fixed here. You know? um, and I don't know what we're going to do if we don't fix it. Because as we talk, you know, you're the person that I talked to before we throw him out. Um, the differences he's going to pay in taxes, unbelievable. I, I, I just feel, I feel terrible. I, I mean, I do. Uh, because there may not be nothing he can do or I can do. You just have to sit back and you're going to lose $40,000 in taxes. So well, Thank you for putting it on me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. Anyway, there's no And so if anybody has any questions, if something comes up, we'll do a mass phone call. We'll keep everybody in the booth. Um, we're trying to take care of you. Anybody else have any questions though? Thanks everybody. We're back with you.